everybody, and and welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh, and uh, Hey Man. Hey, listen. Uh, excited to have you here. Big thank you to everybody who listens and everybody who watches. Um, and uh, yeah, man. Such. I just want to start off real quick with this. First of all, if you can't tell by my face and my voice, feeling way better. You know when you're sick and you're like, I'm just going to feel like this forever. You know, you know that always, whenever I get sick, that always enters my head. Well, guess I'm going to be like this forever. And obviously you're not. But this time I really thought, actually, maybe. It was the longest illness I've ever had. It felt terrible, but I'm back. I want to say something else. Yo, this weekend on the road was the first weekend I've felt like myself on stage in probably, I've got to be four or five years. I've had great shows and we've done great shows. And don't think anybody who's come that, that uh, oh, I got fucking cheated. Not we, we, it was still great shows. I am so much better without weed. Holy shit. Holy shit. I had convinced myself that I had become a better storyteller with the weed or there would be one or two things every show that obviously wouldn't have happened if I wasn't high that was really funny. So I was like, see, that wouldn't have happened if I was sober. But I forgot about the rest of the show where my stories weren't as crisp. The pacing wasn't right. Sometimes I'd feel like a half a beat off. And in comedy, a half a beat can be a lot. And this weekend in Omaha, dude, I might, I will eventually go back to maybe smoking weed every now and then. And I might, might get high if I plan in advance and I build a show as, hey, I'm getting high this show, come out. But dude, I'm never going to be that guy again. I'm never going to be that guy again who's high all the time on stage. Nope, nope, nope. And let me just clarify, there were some nights where I wasn't, sh maybe I wasn't smoking weed before the early show, for sure. But I had so much weed in me that it, I, it, it affected how I performed. And I just feel I ended up low vibing a little bit on stage. Yo, I'm going to tell you right now, all six shows this weekend, five in Omaha, one in Chicago, I felt fucking great bangers all of them. all of them. I so I'm telling you right now you see me on the schedule come out to a show I may I'm, I'm I will this is a guarantee I will go back to doing periodic mushroom shows because those were fun but dude yo hop on board it's fucking good I might even put out another special in January honestly I got about two hours of material I don't know. I also want to say, congratulations, we did pull a winner uh, for the two airfare, airfare for two and two tickets anywhere. I don't know why I'm putting them for. From the contest, and Amanda Castle from Kansas City is the winner. I want to say this also. How super dope that Amanda won, because I believe Amanda has been to, like, no shit, 12 or 13 of my shows. I'm so happy that she won. So congratulations to Amanda. I want you all to know also, I know last week I said I'm sending out the Giddy Up t-shirts. I am sending them out tomorrow. Uh, last week got packed and we and I still wasn't feeling well and I wasn't leaving the house. And and uh, and so I didn't, I just basically slept all week. Um, but I feel good. I, I'm sure you can tell by listening or if you're watching that I look alive. I looked at some of the videos I put out last week and I was like, look at that dead dude. Dead dude, dead dude. You know what I'm talking about. But fucking boop, boop, psyched, guys. So happy. Huge thanks to uh, Omaha, Funny Bone, for bringing me back to life. And to Colleen, who runs that club, who really brought me back to life as well. So bing, bang, boop. And Bakersfield and Sacramento this week uh, with Tara and Trey. Um, I'm just giving them first names because that sounds important, like Cher and Oprah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, what a great weekend. Um, Weed Free has been just 
so much better for my life than I thought it was going to be. I just need to use it the way you're supposed to use it, which is like celebratory or fun, not like it's eight o'clock, got to smoke weed. I fooled myself into thinking I needed it to sleep. I don't. I fooled myself into thinking I needed it for pain from my back. I don't. It turns out I can sleep with or without it. And it turns out my back doesn't hurt as long as I exercise. You know what I mean? And so we did not want me, although I exercise with weed anyways. But happy to be back, guys. Super, super excited. I was in Omaha this week. And uh, yo, dude, it was, it on Saturday night, <laughs> on Saturday <laughs> On the Saturday Night Late Show, I was like, guys, this is like the first Saturday Night Late Show I've been high in a long time. And half the crowd started to boo. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. They were like, you know. And one guy was like, I'm on mushrooms. I was like, yeah, dude, I fucking wish I was. Yeah, I, I get it, everybody. I get it. But the shows are better. So come one, come all. That sounds dirty, but it isn't. Besides that, quick little uh, update on Jacob. He seems to be doing well. We filmed an episode of Dr. Phil last week. Not the real Dr. Phil, but Adam Ray's Dr. Phil. Super funny. I can't wait for you guys to see that. It is and was a just dynamite show. Adam Ray is next level funny. And I'm, I want to tell you something else. It's all announcement right now. From here on out, man, my social media, guys... I'm just going to be putting out shit that I think is fun. We're going to be doing fun. Fun, funny, weird, funny, fun, fun. That's it, man. It's it, it, there. People are tense enough in general. People are bickering as usual, election or not election. And um, I don't want to contribute to that on my social media. Not that I do. But so we're going to be doing fun shit. And I haven't decided exactly specifically what that's going to be. But it's going to be something. Dude, I got, okay. I got to ask you an air, I got to ask you an airplane question. When you're on an airplane, because I flew today from Chicago here, and the dude behind me must have hit my chair on the four hour flight. Let's call it conservatively a hundred times. Okay. Probably crossing and uncrossing his legs. And I, I'm not a dude who, uh, but you know what I'm a master of? The passive aggressive turnaround and look. Oh, I'm so good at that. But if they don't pick up on that, what do you think is the threshold? Because look, you've got to touch the seat in front of you. But people are too comfortable on planes. Let's start. And, and I, some people are like, enough with the shoes off. Who cares if they have their shoes off? Me. Shoes off is is a beach or in your home situation. So shoes off are not good. FaceTiming somebody without your headphones in are not good. Okay. All these things I think we can agree. But let me ask you, what is your, I got two plain questions. for you. What is your feeling on how many times they can hit your seat without saying something? I said something at about 30. I just said, hey, dude. You've got to stop. I'm on the other side of this seat. I said it nicer, actually, because I'm a nicer dude. I said, hey, can you please stop hitting the chair? It, it's waking me up. And this is what he said. It just happens when I cross and uncross my legs. I'm like, okay, can you stop? And he was like, well, I like to have my legs crossed. I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I'm on the other side of this seat. And every time you do, you, you wake me up. And he was like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm like, maybe, maybe do it less or not at all. No, I, here's the thing. I understand he bought that seat. So he gets to get comfortable. But when, this is the question, when does your comfort versus somebody else's comfort around you when do those things balance out? You know what I mean? Now, there, I think there will probably be, we'll fall on two different sides in this a lot of people. But I feel like we live in a society where you can't always just think about your comfort 
And if your comfort is causing other people discomfort, you you got to mitigate that somehow. Right? It's like, okay, I don't mean to sound like an ass, but it's like, if, y'all, if I'm on a Southwest flight and a really huge dude or woman is in the C group and sits in the middle and they're, they're like leg, half their leg bone. And you know, it's just, see, it's just over to my side. I'm sympathetic that the plane seats aren't that big, but if you are that fucking big, maybe you should get in the A group so you can squeeze up against the window or the aisle. But the middle, you're now seeping into everybody's seat. And this is not a me problem. You know, this is not a me issue. The reason I hate the aisle, guys, and I, is because I don't like when people walk by and their booty is just rubbing against my show all the time. I, and I've seen Biddy, that video of that woman saying the planes are like anti-fat person because the aisles don't fit her. Yo, if you don't fit on a fucking plane, I don't think that's the planes issue. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think that's the planes issue. Where do you guys fall on this? Where do you guys fall on? Because we've got to be able to find a way in the middle. Yes, we have to be able to uh, 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 be sympathetic and empathetic for other people. Right? But when is your comfort, when it, when it, when it starts to cringe on other people's comfort, where is the line for that? If your comfort is unreasonable, like I think this dude crossing and uncrossing the legs 190 times, I think that's unreasonable. Just don't do it. I'm. This is the seat I'm in. Do you know what I mean? And I feel the same way. Like, yo, I'm, I'm sorry if you're 360. I, I, you know what? I'm sure you're not psyched about. That is not a me. That is not a me issue. You know what I mean? Wrong, right? I'm dying to hear what you guys have to say about that. I'm so curious because I'm sure there are people who fall on either side of it. And I bet you if I was bigger, I might have a different opinion. I mean, I think it goes without saying. I haven't mentioned it yet. I know I probably everybody's talking about it on their podcast. So I guess I should probably mention it because everyone in the country is talking about it. But I didn't love Venom 3. Didn't love it. Sorry. But you know what's crazy? It's so sad to me that the, uh, there's no movies. Like when you look at the, you go to the movie, like you, I said to Beth, I'm like, let's go see a movie. And I was like, there are zero movies. I miss the movie theater, man. I miss the movie theater so much. I used to love to go to the movie theater and get a red vine. No, nah, sorry, Twizzler. Don't, don't even at me with that red vine is better than Twizzler. Don't even, the only thing that Red Vine is better for than Twizzler is whipping somebody in the hamstring. Dude, those Red Vines would fucking hurt. On a hammy, a bear hammy, you go Red Vine to bear hammy, okay. There are a few candies that are delicious but also can be used for violence. Red Vine. You know, Red Vine to the, back to the hammy or like to the bear, like is a fucking out. Those tiny little Charleston chews, I don't know if you guys remember those, or Rolos, if you put them in the freezer and you whip or peppermint patty, you can really whip those at people. You know what I was thinking about the other day? Because that's all childish. Shit. You know what I was thinking about the other day? The difference between like growing up when I was growing up. and You know, I had a neighbor and... <laughs> we, I would ride on his handlebars of his bike. N- neither one of us with helmets, and we would go to the grocery store to buy his dad cigarettes when we were like twelve. And the guy at the grocery store, you know, at the supermarket, it was at Cumberland Farms. The guy at the Cumberland Farms was like, "Yeah," he was like, "These are for my dad." He's like, "Okay, tell your dad I say hi." Fucking just pack marble roads. Do you know what else we did at this Cumberland Farms? 
I don't know how I convinced this dude. I convinced him to let me run up an account. I, maybe I was 11 or 12, and it was at this, I think I grew up in Amherst, and it was in North, North Amherst, out near this place where I grew up, and the park there was Mill River. That's also Mill River, too. There was, when we were little kids, there was this really big, I don't know, he must have been 17, 18 year old kid with Down syndrome named Louie. And uh, we used to play tag with Louie. Yo, dude, but if Louie caught you, he tagged you real hard. Louie did not know his strength. Louie would tag you and just fucking wow. Louie always started it. He liked being it. And he very rarely got to tag you and not be it. But when he tagged you, he came in with the heaviest hand. You could. <laughs> Louie would fucking. And he'd be like, yeah, right. And he would, well, he would love it, dude. Running away laughing. But you were just like, you had a handprint on you from like a week. You could have drawn one of those turkeys on you for a fucking week. And he ended Louie. Louie also, dude, when I was the very first concussion I ever got, I fell off a slide. This is how much little we knew about head injuries and shit. Um, I fell off a slide and hit my head at Mill River. And we were playing tag. And Louie fucking picked me up, dude. Like Lenny from Mice and Men. Just cradled me like a baby and laid me down in the shade. And he was like, I'm going to call your parents. But you know what the thing is? Like my parents, they were just like, get on your bike and, <laughs> and come home. <laughs> you know? That's a, the, <laughs> we went to the, they had a phone at the swimming pool. We didn't obviously have phones. And they were like, yeah, tell them to get on this bike and come home. I, it's one of those things where like my memory of it, I don't have any memory of the fall and people just told me about Louie carrying me and I have like pieces of memory, the bike ride, but yeah, dude, we, so I convinced this dude, me and my buddy convinced this dude who worked at Cumberland Farms to, uh, I was like, this. here's what I, you keep track end of the month. Tell me how much I owe you, and I'll give it to you. And he was like, you going to have the money? I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll have the money. I used to deliver newspapers. I also mowed some lawns in the summer, shoveled driveways in the winter, raked leaves in the fall. Yo, dude, we made money, man. We also threw snowball. Yeah, dude, the town I grew up in, man, I'm dying to know what you guys did. I'm sure people who grew up around my age did this, some similar things, like, we used to throw snowballs in cars and it was, we did it, but do you know when the game ended? Every time somebody got out of the car and fucking chased us. Grown man. Like a, a human man would chase, and if, dude, if you got caught by one of those human men, you were in for a little bit of a beating. And so I always identified right away who the slowest kid was and I was like, I'm not running with him. Because I didn't want to feel like you know, I didn't want to watch him take a beat. And there were times when I was the slowest kid. And so that I always hung back. I was not up front throwing the snowballs. I wanted to get a fucking head start. And I planned my escape route. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, if it, listen, legit, that's super dumb to throw snowballs at cars. We didn't test these drivers for good reflexes. If we'd thrown a snowball at a car and it hit an old lady, like that old lady's car, an old lady's car. Who knows what would happen? It seemed like we only had young dudes' cars because they got out and fucking chased us. Dude. You know what else we did in this? Such a different time. First, we hitchhiked. The original Uber. We hitchhiked. Nobody said boo. Nobody, nobody was like, don't do that. We hitchhiked. But we also, I don't know, we probably called it different things in different parts of the country. But, you know, in the wintertime, when it was slushy outside, we would hold on to the bumper of a car and let it take you for a ride on the side, you know? It was, here's the thing. On people like, the fucking good old days, kids are pussies. Yes, but no. Because here's the truth. And I talk about this in my act, so I'm not going to go into it too much. Because I want you guys to know when, you, when as a comic, if you find a story on your podcast and then you tell it on stage, there's always a group of people like, heard that on the podcast. And you're like, yeah, dude. 
So I'm not going to get into it too much. But here's what I will say. I wish we could marry the two. Because we grew up unsupervised. And I'm not saying that's the best way. Like, the, yeah, we did crazy shit because there was nobody there to be like, hey, 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 don't put him in the refrigerator. There was nobody like, don't. Did you just put him in a laundry basket and push him down the stairs? There was nobody who was like, hey, will you get your little brother out of the dryer? He's not supposed to be in there. Why are you doing that to the cat? Or whatever. But at the same time, I think thing ro- things rolled off our backs a little more. You know what's crazy? Like, for as politically correct and has as much as bullying is in the headlines as it should be, I feel like, and I maybe it's just because I didn't hear about it, less teen suicide, less extreme anxiety. I think a lot of that has to do with phones probably. But there's something to be said with building, well, it's like building your immune system. There's something to be said for being like, oh, those are just words. And there's something to be said, look, I could differentiate between my friends making Jew jokes and somebody who was like, oh, I, oh that dude doesn't like Jews. I didn't just get triggered right away by hearing a word. I could kind of decipher, you know, with the jokes. And the jokes were jokes. And some of them maybe you didn't like. But that was fine. That you just, you know, here's the thing. We took, we went so far to take care of, uh, of them and we did and protect them. Now, now the, everything hurts. And I, I, I think learning how to deal with things you don't like or that make you uncomfortable early on prepares you better for when life does it for you. When life's like, oh, hey, you like that? Boink. You know, and the three stooges, you're right in the eye. By the way, if there are some of you who don't know what the three stooges are, I don't know if they'd even air the Three Stooges right now. What my fucking favorite. Three Stooges, Home After School on Channel 38 in Western Mass. Channel 38, guys. That's right, you heard me. Channel motherfucking 38 had aptitude. This is old. Let me not get into that. That's old. But yeah, I think it's interesting. I, I think there's got to be a marrying of the two. I don't. I disagree with like the kids who are pussies. I don't. I don't like that. I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true. I have kids come to my shows all the time, and uh, I poke fun of them. Just on a completely different side note, I have been killing it with my NFL bets this year. So if you're interested in me posting or talking, putting my bets on here, my uh, I will. I had done that a little bit before, and people were like, "Stop doing that." Uh, but I'm happy to do it if you guys want to get on the wind train. Because, dude, it is moving in the right direction. Now now that I said it out loud, I'm going to drink. I'll, I know I'm going to drink the fuck out of it. But it feels like it, you know, my the key for me is I only bet one game a week. That's it, one game a week. And that's it. Anyway, I also wanted something, Was I was reminded of something this weekend that is super important. I had some friends of mine from college fly into the shows. I mean, Jeff Haig and Jeff Pitcher. And man, I forgot how important connections with people who really fucking know you are. Not know you since you started doing comedy or just known you the last couple of years, but fucking know you. It filled me up in a way I can't, I can't explain to you. And it reassured me that my decision lately to reclassify the people in my life was right. I have friends and I have people that I know and like, but I have very few friends. I have very few friends. And these dudes are fucking friends. And it it reminded me the difference. Just hanging around them and being with them. Reminded me the difference of, oh, these are fucking, this is what it is. We're humans, dude. We're, connection is good. And especially with connection, fuck, people who, who know you know you. Awesome. So big thanks to Jeff and Jeff. 
who I beat the shit out of at uh, Top Golf. I didn't. I told them I was going to lie about it on the podcast, but I didn't. I, I think I lost both games. Um, but speaking of good connection, guys, you really want to have a good connection with somebody? You know what else helps? An ice cold best day brew. Yeah. Dude, delicious beer. Oh, and no alcohol. That is like, I'm just telling you guys why. I know there are a lot of sober people who listen to this. Why do I know? Because since Jacob, you've been coming out of the woodwork and being like, I'm sober, I'm sober, I'm sober, right? And when it first started, I was like, oh, you're boring, you're boring. But I know you're not. Now that I know I'm sober and not boring. <laughs> the best day is a way for me to, to enjoy a taste of a beer, to be able to crack open a beer, which I haven't been able to do in so long. And I've just been sitting out on my backyard area and just enjoying it. It's getting a little cooler. I like a little crispness. Guys, Best Day Brew and the guy who owns this company, Jim, I keep telling, saying this as the biggest reason why you should buy the beer. Besides that it tastes good. Besides that it's natural and the ingredients are fucking pure. Because Jim has not sold out. Jim has kept the company small. It's growing like crazy. Jim hasn't sold to Anheuser-Busch or one of these other huge corporations that's going to fuck up his beer. He's kept it small, quality control for us. I mean, he's not money grab. And since he's not money grabbing, we should reward him. Go get yourself a Best Day Brew. I'm telling you, not only is it an amazing company and run by a great dude, but the quality is top fucking notch. Best Day Brew, everybody. Rock and roll. Go get you some. Hey, Bakersfield this week and Sacramento, joshwolftickets.com for all tickets. The week after that, uh, I am in Des Moines, Iowa. Those tickets will sell out for show. Ready to go. We got an article about a German butcher selling raccoon sausages in a bid to combat uh, rampant uh, overbreeding by the raccoons that are basically overwhelming uh, his local uh, town. Um. Before I read the article, can't why not just kill the raccoon? Why you got to eat it? Do you know what I mean? That feels like a bad excuse, dude. I'm doing it to get rid of the raccoons. Plus, two for you know what I mean. Well, well I, don't, I don't know if you remember that uh, story we did a while back about the lady who was feeding the raccoons and she basically got surrounded by a swarm of them. I do remember? That. Yeah, yeah. How do you think? How, I have nightmares about that. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, um, so. He, he sales of raccoon filled products soar. The feedback was so great, we decided to include it in our range. Before that, I'd always just thrown the carcasses away. His store is reportedly the first in Germany to sell raccoon sausages in what could prove to be an ingenious solution to the nation's worsening raccoon plague. Rice's products include raccoon breakfast sausage, a liver sausage, and even a soup made from the rodent bones. Okay. Here's the thing. I think, I bet, I think because any sausage is good. Let's be honest. Pork sausage good, venison sausage good, beef sausage good. The way they sausage up a sausage makes the sausage delicious. The one thing I think would make the sausage bad is if you just told me it was raccoon. Can't you just not? Nobody, it's like telling me what's in a hot dog. Just say sausage. What kind of sausage? It's just, it's sausage. Okay. But when you say raccoon sausage, all, all of a sudden I'm feeling pretty nauseous. Because I don't know why. I don't know. By the way, that raccoon looks kind of cute. He looks like a cat. Uh, dude, why are you going to eat that little dude? He looks pretty. Raccoon has a del delicate taste. It's difficult to describe. But if you eat one of my regular bratwurst and then a raccoon sausage, you know the difference. But why the but bratwurst? I don't know what's in bratwurst. Why can't you just give it another name besides raccoon? You know what I mean? Like that. Like here's the thing: there's just some animals, no matter how delicious they might be. Like if you were like, dude, rat is the most delicious meat in the world. Just don't tell me. Don't don't. The thing that stops me from eating veal is that I know what it is. I'm a little upset by it. I just, I'm like, oh, poor buddy. Because if you know me, 
you know that I want a mini cow more than not to eat, just to have as my own. I would like a mini cow. So I don't, a little, little, a little buddy cow. They look so fun and happy. I don't know if they do this. Do cows make noises? Whatever. But I feel like it would sell better in the States, especially. I don't know how they do it in Germany. They do a little thing, things different in Germany. Then one, my, <laughs> all right, I'm going to tell you a story, but I won't give you the guy's name. There's a guy who was on a tour that I was on. And he wasn't, um, he was the merch guy on this tour. And we were talking about Germany. He was like, dude, I was in Germany for like three months. And I go, oh, how was it? He goes, can I tell you something? I go, what? He goes, everything's a little accelerated in Germany. I go, what do you mean? He goes, every girl I dated, first date, she put her finger in my butthole. I was like, what? First date? He was like, dude, first date, finger in the butthole, every single girl. And I was like, so raccoon doesn't surprise me in Germany. And even calling it raccoon. But first date finger in the butthole feels like a place where they'd be like, yeah, I'll try some records. They feel a little over the edge in Germany. You know, I, I, this, I mean, and this, and by the way, I'm not anti FIB. Do you know why I call it FIB? I dated this girl who was too <laughs> nervous she was like, there are a lot of things I want to try. I was like, okay. I go, what? She goes, I'm too shy to say them. I'm going to write them all down. So she acronymed all of them and made me guess what they were. I never guessed FIB. I'm like, FIB? Front. I couldn't get it. And then she was like, FIB, finger in the butt. I was like, oh. So these Germans doing FIB in the raccoon sausage, I guess in, in a weird way connects with me. Not connects, but you know, dink. Or scissors, but I don't. I don't know if I'm eating it. If you tell me it's raccoon, I, is it? I wonder if it's fatty or not fatty. Um, Germany is facing an ever-growing raccoon plague. Personally, culled two hundred of the animal in his hunting district this year alone. Okay, I bet you. Here's what I bet. Okay, here's what I bet. I bet you that he killed a bunch, sold some. And since people were like, this is delicious, he was like, all right, let's 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 try telling him. I, he sold some raccoon before he told people it was a raccoon, for sure, just to see how it tastes. He probably tasted it. He was like, this is good, but I can't just go out and tell people I got raccoon because people are going to be like, what? And I know people eat possum and shit too. Uh, just don't tell me it's possum. As soon as they are hunted... More move in from neighboring territories, really, to take their place. We've got to reduce their numbers because they're threatening amphibians, birds, and bat populations. This I understand. I understand because they're smart too. So, and those other animals you just talked about are not. So they probably fuck them up and they're trash pandas and they're in your shit. I get it. I get it. With the raccoon population soaring by 2 million. That's Rhode Island, for fuck's sake. That's more than Delaware, I think. Two million in this one area? Two? Yeah, you got to eat them. Or you know what you do? You go straight Dracula, and you kill them, and then you put your heads on, you had the heads on spikes. And you're like, this is what happens for your kind if you come around here. You go intimidation. Or I guess, I guess so. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going, yeah. Just don't tell me, is I guess what I'm saying. All right. Wow. Matt, where are you at with the raccoon sausage? Uh, I'm with you. I'm a little bit uh, hesitant about it. But, um, you know, one time I went to New Orleans, I had alligator sausage. That was kind of interesting. Yeah, I had that too. Uh, and I don't feel as bad eating the alligator as I do the raccoon. It doesn't feel as weird to me. It's a giant animal... I don't know. Something about raccoon feels rodenty, which feels like eh, maybe not. But like I said, two million of them. Yeah, we got to start cutting down on that population. All right, what else you got, dude? All right, we have an interesting story uh, from uh, the Ukraine war. 
where North Korean troops that have been sent to reinforce Russian soldiers mm -hmm. have, for the first time in their lives, been allowed unfettered internet access in Russia, and now they're all addicted to porn. Yo, yo, yeah, they did not. Yo, I would have never thought of that, but yeah, I that of course. It's 10,000 young men. It's like what happens to the Mormons when they go to college. You were <laughs> this girl who I went to college with who was a Mormon. And, um, you know, she had never done anything. And then, you know, by the fir her first Halloween, she had done anal in a, gr in a gorilla suit. Because she'd been locked in her house for her entire life, you know? So, this makes sense. The North Korean troops have never seen titties. A lot. Whoa, that must have blown their fucking mind. At first of all, I bet you that I, I'm so here. I'm so curious. First of all, I want to know what type of porn is the most popular. What do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I I doubt. Yeah, what type they. For sure, they're looking at dudes with big dicks, like big black dudes with huge dicks. They're like, what the fuck? That's blowing their mind. I, I do need to point out that you just talked about dicks. So, Damn it. <laughs> well, you, 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 <laughs> you gave me this. How am I? Hi, buddy. Hi. So what's interesting is that in North Korea, they have what's called an intranet, not an internet. Yeah. And it's basically controlled by the state and it's all just filled with propaganda. So yeah. none of, no one in North Korea actually has access to pornography. Dude, no, I get it. I understand that entirely. There's probably a lot of things that are blowing their mind. I, I bet you there's some like special effects. Or some graphic, you know what? I wonder if they have, you know, what's those dudes who do those trick shots? That out of Texas A and M, that's probably blowing their mind too. They, I wonder if they've ever seen Lord of the Rings. Yo, there, there's so much out there that I'm, and they finally get to read about North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is that? Where I live? Holy shit! Is this what people think about me? That I mean, between the porn. And actually researching their own country, I'm sure it's fucking them up a little bit. But how are they gonna go fight when they're just jerking off all the time? Okay, let's let's. I'm gonna guess top three types of porn that they're looking at. Okay. Um. All right. I mean, actually, it at this point they're starting off on basic level. They haven't got into the crazy shit yet because they don't. It's like when you first start looking at it, you're like, that's a titty. He's grabbing titties. Or you might even just be looking at just naked people. You don't even have oh, looking at Also, it, it's Russian internet. So, like, they're not getting access to all the US sites right away. It's all the Russian sites that they're getting access to. Dude, I'm sure Russian porn is fucking filthy. Are you kidding? Oh, yeah. And German porn? Oh, German porn is FIB, baby. <laughs> <laughs> there goes straight FIB. I bet your Russian porn is not gentle. It feels <laughs> like some like real heavily clothed, a lot of vodka. You know, people. Oh, dude! I bet you those that breadline porn is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> people. Yeah, dude. People, it's like instead of the pizza delivery guy, it's just it's they're in the bread line. You know how many loaves of bread you got? Down on chicken. Yeah. So North Korea basically sent ten thousand troops to help with the Ukrainian war effort, and according to this source, the soldiers, the North Korean soldiers, have been quote unquote gorging on pornography ever since they've gotten access to it. Yeah, I honestly am not sure. I'm super curious by that word gorging. I know what it means, but gorging on pornography feels like they couldn't come up with a word that sufficiently described how much porn they were watching. 
Like they're not going to do well out on the battlefield with one hand on their dick. It's going to be harder to shoot the gun from what I understand. No pun intended. I mean, I, okay. So it's 10,000 dudes who have never seen porn or really anything on the internet before. They've never seen anything about North Korea. They've never seen that. What? Let me ask you this. What else do you think besides porn? Like, what's the next thing? Video games? Are they? I don't know how much video games they get to watch. I, I don't know. TikTok recipes? Like, what are they? I just <laughs> can't imagine being a grown human male. And they're probably anywhere from 18. Let's say 18. And you have access to porn for the first time. That has got to be so distracting. And I might defect right away. I'd be like, I'm not, I'm not going back there. Are you kidding? They get titties over here in Russia. The interesting thing about porn is that you don't need to speak a different language to process it. No, right? it's, it's universal language. Yep. Titties, titties are universal. This is true. Wow. What else does it say in the article? Anything good or is that it? That's pretty much the best part of it. It's A lot of it's just kind of uh, talking about the Ukrainian war and stuff like that. But uh, there, there, there's this one paragraph that says that a spokesman for the U.S. Department of Defense responded after the claims concerning North Korea's soldiers' internet habits gained traction. And uh, they basically said that they are unable to verify any North Korean internet habits or virtual extracurricular extracurriculars in Russia. Do you know what? Honestly, we might be seeing the downfall of North Korea right now. We don't have to bomb them. We just have to fly over their airspace and drop a lot of porn. Do you know what I mean? You know how they drop... <laughs> you just drop a bunch of hustlers and playboys and be like, look what you're missing! <laughs> Pe- it would be an, it would cause an uproar. You, you figuratively disarm them. Oh, t- are you kidding? <laughs> that would be crazy and be like, look what Kim Jong-un has been keeping from you. Pe- they would lose their mind. They, I, and before I go, I do want to get to this story. People are asking questions about a 188-year-old man found living in a cave. How do you... I want to know, how are are people like trees? Can you cut them open and find out how old they are? How do you find that this man, 188, feels like a little bit of an exaggeration, which puts him somewhere, what, around the 1840s? That's when he was born? So this this guy is technically a living saint in India. Yeah. And uh, the initial reports about him being 188 years old were a little bit overblown. Yeah. But he's actually closer to 110 years old. How do old. you know, Matt? How, how, this is what I'm asking. How can you tell how old some dude is? And why do they, if he's a saint, why don't they take, why didn't they take him out of the cave 80 years ago? What the fuck is that? That seems a little fucked up. They keep this dude in a, in a cave. And why are they taking him out now? If he's lived that long in a cave, just let him live there. No one knows the exact age. He's never before this age. If I've lived in a cave for 110 years, I probably don't know when the day begins and a day ends. How, how does he know how old he is? Apparently people migrate to the cave to like get blessings from him. And there's a story that he stood on one leg for 10 years uh, meditating and uh, people would come and like visit him and like just watch him standing there on one leg. Cool. But like this also, it doesn't tell me how old he is. And it also doesn't tell me why nobody took him out of the fucking cave. What, what did why, nobody showed up from the government? We're like, Hey dude, we don't, we don't live in caves. Let me, let's get you indoors. You know, this feels, I, I, I have so many questions and I'm happy, dude. By the way, you know there are some fucking nuts here in the States who are like, cave living, that's the key to longevity. That's going to be the new podcast, everybody, cave living. And that's how you live longer. It's not it's not ice baths and, and, uh, and saunas, and it's got nothing to do with NAD or exercise. You got to go live in a cave and stand on one foot. If you told people that, the key to longevity is to go to a cave Stand on one foot and drink your own urine. 
there, Gwyneth Paltrow would be there tomorrow, steaming her vagina on one foot in a cave. I, I am curious though. Wait, I'm gonna read that. I'll t- let me read that. Currently, the oldest living human is okay, a Japanese woman born in 1908, 116 years old. I, I'm gonna go on record and say, pass. A hundred percent pass on 106, 108, 112. Pass, mostly because <clears throat> one, I've never seen somebody that old and been like, yeah, that. That person looks good. And, and people are like, no, she's doing great. She knows who I am. That's not quality of life. Me knowing who you are is not quality of life. You know? I'm a past. Not only that, for real, real, I don't want to outlive everyone that I know and love. You know who does isn't going to give one shit about me? My great, great grandkids. They're going to be like, who's that old fuck? I've, I've, been nine, I've been old since they knew me. They don't care. I don't want to outlive everybody I know. That doesn't sound like something for me. But now I will say, my parents, 87, 88, sharp as tack, mentally, physically getting around, great. I'm in for as long as that's happened. But I am I think I'm out on somebody wiping my ass. Unless it's funny. Like, unless Jacob has to do it for the last 20 years of my life. And I'll be like, you missed a spot. That sounds funny. All right, everybody, this was fun. Energy back, focus back, fun back. Indiana's back. Hi, buddy. You, we're going to go. I know you are hungry as shit. Yeah, you want to come up here? If you're in Vegas, (laughs) I think, buddy. If you're in Vegas on a Monday night, remember I do a residency here every Monday night. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Josh Wolf tickets. Dot com for tickets to shows. And hey everybody, thank you very much again, Amanda Castle. Uh, you let me know the tickets in the show you want to go to. Send in the Giddy Up t-shirts out. We'll have another contest coming. And uh, guys, stay tuned for the fun. This is what we're here for, man. We're here to entertain you and have fun and for you to relax and and enjoy yourselves for an hour and when you come to my shows just know they're on fucking fire right now i'm so happy to be here i'm so happy to be back i'm so happy for my brain to be semi working again and i'm so happy that all of you are here and have joined us thank you all so much i really do love you and i'm so grateful for all of you um and we'll talk to you on indiana we'll talk to you next week Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.